Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with the news from Google, where the company is starting to test AI mode as a core part of their search experience. Users are reporting a few different UX variants on the Google homepage. Some are seeing a little AI mode at the end of the search bar, while others are seeing it replace the I'm feeling lucky button below the bar. So why would we be covering a UX update? Because frankly, for Google, whose incredibly clean homepage design is iconic, and which has gone through very few changes in the past two decades, this shows just how central to their future plans AI really is. Google started testing their AI mode in March on their Google Labs platform, and it functions in a similar way to Perplexity or ChatGPT search, basically being a much more interactive design than AI overviews that were introduced last year. Maybe more important, though, is what this suggests about how Google sees the competition for AI search. Google stock plunged last week after Apple executive Eddie Q said that AI search engines would eventually replace Google. He also suggested that he's starting to see people switch over in the data. Was the market's reaction to all of that a wake-up call for Google, demonstrating that they need to put their AI features right in front of users and show the market that they're not going to sit passively by while search is disrupted? Maybe. This also could have been just part of a long-standing plan where the timing is just coincidence. There's also something symbolic about Google deciding whether to kill the I'm feeling lucky button, which presents the user with a random website. Now, in many ways, I'm feeling lucky is an artifact of a different time. It's a nostalgic feature, hearkening back to the early 2000s, when there were only a few million websites on the internet, and someone might plausibly want to just surf around to find something new and interesting. Still, I'm feeling lucky has held its spot on the Google front page since the beta release all the way back in 1998. And while ultimately it may not matter all that much practically, again, there is something symbolic about the idea of replacing this thing which allowed humans to explore the uncharted bounds of the early internet with AI mode, putting AI in control of information discovery. It actually says kind of a lot about the change from human-centric to AI-mediated UX. Pablo Esparza writes, Are we ready for a future where AI is the go-to, leaving spontaneity behind? Now, Google also launched a new fund to invest in AI startups. The AI Futures Fund will back startups ranging from seed to late stage that are interested in building on top of Google's technology. Founders will be offered varying degrees of additional support, including early access to AI models, cloud credits, and the ability to work alongside researchers from DeepMind and Google Labs. A Google spokesperson said, The AI Futures Fund doesn't follow a batch or cohort model. Instead, we consider opportunities on a rolling basis. There's no fixed application window or deadline. When we come across companies that align with the fund's thesis, we may choose to invest. We're not announcing a specific fund size at this time, and check sizes vary based on the company's stage and needs. The fund has apparently already backed players like Replit, Viggle, and Synthesia. Another big social platform, TikTok, is launching a new AI feature. This time it is an image-to-video feature that allows users to animate their photos to make short-form content on the platform. The company writes, The feature uses intelligent editing tools that give anyone, regardless of editing experience, the ability to transform static images into captivating short-form videos enhanced with movement, atmospheric, and creative effects. The Verge reports that video outputs are a few seconds long, and processing takes several minutes, so we're still in the era where technical limitations could prevent AI video from proliferating widely. Still, it's definitely clear that social media is pushing hard into AI-generated content. We've seen Instagram dabble with similar features over the past year, but nothing really has landed as the first native viral AI content with the possible exception of GPT-40 flooding X with Ghibli memes earlier this year. Lastly today, some interesting reporting about Project Stargate. According to Bloomberg, the ambitious project is struggling to get off the ground thanks to funding issues, related at least in part to tariffs and associated market volatility. Bloomberg sources say that that volatility has caused potential lenders to be much less eager to back the data center build-out. Now, when Stargate was first unveiled in January, SoftBank committed to deploy $100 billion immediately and raise around $500 billion over time. More than three months later, SoftBank appears to not yet have begun detailed talks with lenders. They opened preliminary talks with dozens of banks and alternative asset managers earlier this year. However, Bloomberg sources say that lenders have become squeamish at the idea of funding expensive data centers in the midst of both rising economic volatility and cost reductions in AI services. Bloomberg writes, Complicating matters is the emergence of a flurry of cheaper AI models, such as Chinese startup DeepSeeks, and questions over how they might affect long-term profitability of projects linked to OpenAI. Tariffs are also set to weigh on the project even if funding is secured. Cost increases for hardware, including server racks, cooling systems, and chips, have caused data center build costs to rise between 5 and 15%, according to TD Cowan analysts. Now, obviously, we are in the midst of a big return rally, so maybe this will change. 
And we also have some, like Futurum Group CEO Daniel Newman, who said that at the Milken conference last week, he heard 100% the opposite. So who knows? Ultimately, the point which we are going to extend into the main episode today is that macro and geopolitics and AI are getting wound together in interesting ways. And in fact, that is the perfect segue. So there we will close today's headlines. Next up, the main episode. 